Well, hey folks, it's your old pal, King Waspinator. Welcome back to Total Party Skills. As you may have noticed, I've done a few videos on the World of Darkness, Dark Ages books. I have not covered Vampire Werewolf, both in part because print editions of those are not available through Drive-Thru RPG, and also because they are the least changed from their modern day counterparts. Vampires and werewolves basically function the same and have the same mythologies. Uh, some of the clans or tribes might have slightly different names. Uh, there might actually be more active difference between the makeup of the clans amongst vampire than there is amongst werewolf and its tribes. However, uh, functionally, they're, they're fairly identical games. Vampires is a good choice for something that's self-contained. Vampires remain their own worst enemy, and as most of their politics are largely focused on dealing with other vampires, they're kind of off in their own bubble. Werewolves, since they are nearly a full millennia away from the apocalypse, don't really have quite the sense of urgency going on with them as, as you have in the modern day version of Werewolf. And so the Werewolves, along with Mages and Fae, I find actually make a good trinity where you can have player character groups uh, form out of players who are playing different types of supernatural creatures. They are fairly compatible with each other and have enough common interests uh, that, it, that, that, that you can bundle uh, you know, their narratives into a singular story and adventure line easier than, say, trying to bring Inquisitors or, or Vampires into that mix. Like Vampire, Inquisitor is kind of a either-or choice. Uh, Inquisitor characters are not going to be terribly compatible with, with char player characters from other Dark Ages games. They are significantly changed. It's not correct to say Inquisitor is the Dark Ages Hunter the Reckoning. The Inquisition, in many ways, in the 13th century of the World of Darkness, is much more akin to how the technocracy operates in the modern setting. They don't deny that magic isn't real. They say that magic is satanic and only approved arts, the prayers derived from God are, are okay and that kind of stuff. But they have that same kind of weight the technocracy has in that for the large part, they have won the battle for who defines people's perception of reality in this time period. And they are generally antagonistic towards all other supernatural factions. Mages in this time period are even more quasi-religions, which also adds to the Inquisition serving more as the technocracy to the setting than the precursors to the technocracy in the form of the craft masons, who at this stage are still basically an offshoot of the Order of Hermes. Now, because I was able to get old Queen Ophelia to read Dark Ages Mage, I was able to then get her to make a Dark Ages Mage character, and I've written an introductory adventure set in uh, Inverness, Scotland. So my basic advice to other people who might be trying to jump into World of Darkness now, especially since there's the whole kerfuffle with D&D and there's people who might be looking for other systems just to try out for a little bit. The Dark Ages World of Darkness is possibly a better transition for, for game masters like that than, say, jumping straight into the modern day version of the game. You have less factions to have to compete with, and uh, since there's no modern day travel technology, you can even more tightly focus the campaign down into a single locale. A proper World of Darkness game is less generic adventure and more personalized character studies. So my personal recommendation for any World of Darkness game, Dark Ages or Modern Era, is to at least take one of your players and go ahead and get them to make a character before you start really doing the heavy writing for what the first adventure is. Pay attention to their backgrounds in particular, what kind of allies, contacts, mentors they've given themselves, uh, what kind of missions those allies, contacts, or mentors might give them. Uh, do a little research across the different Dark Ages games to the location that you've selected. Find out everything that is referenced to be localized to that area. Try not to stray too much out of that, although there will be blank points where you might want to bring something else in that would seem a natural fit but wasn't mentioned in the books. In the instance of the game I'm writing, it's set in Scotland in Inverness, uh, your major groups referenced in the book is, you know, the old faith mages are going to have a presence there because of, uh, you know, uh, conflicts with uh, Vikings and settlers from the Dane law. You'll have Valdermen. There'll probably be some spirit talkers. Your Order of Hermes types are probably going to be more the kinds that you'll find down in London and more further south, but you're not going to find them that far north into Scotland. Obviously, werewolves are going to feature into the setting. Your Fianna, 
have territory there. Obviously, this is the birthplace of the Black Spiral Dancers and much more closer to the legacy and loss of the White Howler tribe. You also have the Coelacan uh, Bastet, which were the uh, Scottish werecats that are uh, based off a now extinct form of cave lion. They might be a natural uh, faction to have in control of the Scottish county of Caithness. Uh, the Fair said, uh, you know, have a heavy presence in Scotland, but only the Winter Court and the Autumn Court are specifically mentioned in the book on Fay about, you know, what their holdings in Scotland are like. You have the Black Road, which is mostly focused down by Edinburgh, so it's a bit further south than the immediate environs around Inverness. The Black Road is a Winter Court faction that is based... All right, out of the mines and caves that dot the uh, hills and mountains of that region of Scotland. There's also the Autumn Court group known as the Chill Court of the Winter Wraith. Uh, these are a bunch of fae that uh, lurk around Scotland's locks and rivers and like to lure people in to try to seduce and then drown them. I also feel like there should be more of a presence of the Spring Court and because of uh, the way uh, the Scottish Church is kind of uh, talked about in history as, as having a, a little bit of its own character and flavor compared to like mainland continental Catholicism, I was thinking maybe there could be a group of changelings that have renounced their courts, making them effectively solstice fae, who originally derived from the spring court with a little smattering of autumn court, who have uh, joined the Scottish church and form a group called the Good Friars. Uh, these would be uh, changelings who uh, have been helping encourage the Scottish church to still allow uh, the humans of Scotland to practice a bunch of old pagan rituals in Christian holidays so they can maintain the golden oath that protects a lot of the Scottish fae from a casual effects of echoes. Also, because of the heavy black spiral dancer presence, I don't want to rely too much just on Fomori and werewolves. They need some, uh, you know, other kinds of nefarious, uh, tricky kind of allies. And so bringing in the Circle of Red from uh, Devil's Dew uh, as, a, uh, like an, as an alternate group of witches that, that shadows the old faith uh, is, is something I'm kind of trying to plant into the setting. The main crux and dilemma at the beginning of it is that uh, church influence spreading into Scotland because of the introduction of the Shadow Inquisition into Edinburgh by Queen Joan, who I'm going to have be a, a member of Messianic Voices. Their simple acts of just blessing mines and bridges and, and landmarks has, has been severing the ties between the Fey realm and the mortal realm, which threatens to completely undermine the entire Golden Oath that protects Scotland's Fey. And that's the gist of, you know, what I've got going on to start with. Uh, several factions for them to play with, some to potentially ally themselves to, some to potentially become antagonists. Because it is a World of Darkness games, there's no guarantee that the players aren't themselves going to end up taking more of the side of the bad guys, especially since in the Dark Ages context, the, the Church and the Shadow Inquisition are clearly the greater threat that would unite the other factions against them. Those are just some things to keep in mind if you're going to be trying to put together a World of Darkness game. Pick a location, stick to it, focus on it, figure out what's there that's canon to the books, fill in a few blanks as you see necessary, but do not overload it and try to include everything. Instead of using the grind of go explore cave, fight goblins, collect treasure and experience, to go fight in a more powerful cave against more powerful goblins to collect even more treasure. The uh, loop that you will follow in most World of Darkness games is go over here and talk to these people and then go over here and talk to these people. Now try to go over here and talk to these people and bounce between them, try to get them to kind of go in the direction that you want them to go to and hopefully not piss them off so much that send someone after to kill you in your sleep. That's the kind of rough loop that a World of Darkness game should try to follow. And so you, you want to consider how these various supernatural factions interact with each other in both a reinforcing or antagonistic fashion. And that's about it. It's starting to rain, so I guess I'm going to have to take this party inside. Until next time, check out links below, hit like and subscribe, and as always, stay waspinated.